Hello, my name is Luo Yu, and this is the presentation from me and my team members Tang Qianlin as well as Zhang Minjie. Our team project is to use the ResNet to do the cucumber classification. The presentation includes seven parts. I will talk about the first three parts and Minjie will be responsible for the rest. Um, basically, what we are doing is to use a neural network to train a classifier for dividing cucumber into nine classes, according to its length and thickness provided by the pictures of this cucumber. Each cucumber has three images, the top view image, bottom view image, and the side view image. We actually use these three images as the input and classify this cucumber into one of the nine class using a rest net. The dataset and experiment will be talked about later. So actually, this is an image classification task. We have already learned from the course that there are many classical CNN structures for image classification. Both of them will have some advantages and some shortcomings. But the main key is here. Like the picture shows, theoretically, deeper network models with higher capacity should have long, lower training errors. But the result above show the opposite. This is caused by the training difficulties in deeper network models. In bad propagation step, in backward propagation step, the gradient will become very small when it passes back to the formal layer, former layer using the chain rule. This will lead to a almost no update of the parameter in former layer. Here I will give a simple example to show why train a deep neck becomes so hard. This is due to the gradient vanish. The picture shows part of a deep neck. We assume that all the weight is equal to 0.1 initially for simplicity and the activation function is identi identity function. In traditional plane net, the gradient is equal to 0.0001 at x according to the chain rule. This will become smaller in former layer, and as a result, there will be almost no update of the weight in the former layer. But in the rest net, the second part of the image, we use a shortcut to pass, the, pass back the gradient. So the gradient at x will become 1.0001, and training the former parameters can be easier. The shortcut seems to be fantastic in backward propagation since it can preserve the gradient. But does it work in forward propagation? Actually, it works. In plain net, we train the net so that it gives us a mapping function f, mapping the input x to directly fit the target y. But in residual net, because of the existence of the shortcut, mapping function f is no longer used to fit the target y directly. Instead, we train it to fit the difference between target y and the input x, which is also called the residual here. As a result, the residual net is also works in forward propagation, but at this time, training will become much more easier. Give an extreme example. Assume that the input x equals to 5 and the target y is also equals to 5. It is much more easier to train the net to get a mapping function f5 equals to 0 than those with a mapping function f5 equals to 5. Because we can just easily set the parameter of the former one to be all 0, and we can then get the mapping function f5 to 0. Besides, consider to the computer power of our machine, we use a bottleneck structure to replace the normal residual net structure for reducing the parameters. Um, the left one is a normal residual component according to the rest net definition. And the middle one is the rest net structure with bottleneck. And what we actually do in our code is the right one, using RELU as an activation function and also a batch norm layer to avoid gradient vanish further. Here we're going to introduce the structure of our neural network, which is named as ResNet47. It's a modified version of ResNet based on bottleneck. All convolutional layer in our model have bench normalization layer and use leaky ReLU activation functions in order to improve the performance of the model. 
as you can see, each bottleneck based residue unit contains three sublayers. The second sublayer is a convolutional layer with three multiplied with three sides. The entire structure of ResNet 47 have three residual modules. Each residual module have seven residual units. The output dimension of each residual module is 64, 128, and 256. After those residual modules, a global average pooling layer, fully connected layer, and a soft max layer are implemented in our model. Then I will show you the whole neural network in TensorBoard. This is our ResNet 47. There are three residual modules and uh, each module have uh, seven residual units. In the unit, uh, I, you can see there is uh, three sub-layers. Uh, each sub-layer is uh, a convolutional layer. And also for this residual unit, uh, we put the, the activation function before the sublayer, and uh, for others, uh, we won't put a uh, activation function before the sublayer. Data size we use is named as cucumber nine, which divides the cucumbers to nine classes. The layout of this uh, data set is the same as CIFAR time. This data set contains two versions of cucumber images. The first version is prototype 1, which uh, only have top view of cucumbers. The second version is prototype 2, which contains the top view, bottom view, and side view of cucumbers. In our experiment, we use TensorFlow record format to store the dataset and read the dataset with the full thread. The environment of our experiment is shown as the screen C. Uh, we use one GPU, which is NVIDIA Titan XP, to train our model, and we use the framework TensorFlow 1.8 version to build our ResNet 47. And the hyperparameter of this experiment is shown shown in the screen. Uh, we set bench size as uh, 500 samples each iteration, and we set initial learning rate uh, as 0.001. We train three different models for 5,000 iterations. In our experiment, uh, we select uh, 2,800 samples from portal type 2 to build the third data set and train another model named as ResNet 47 p 27 As a result showing in the screen, you can see that ResNet 47 p 27 have a, a higher training accuracy and a higher test accuracy than ResNet 47 p one the higher data dimensions help the model get a better generalization ability. And then the ResNet 47P20 um, outperformance um, the above two models. The um, generalization gap is significantly low and, low and uh, the test accuracy reach uh, 97.2%. Also, we detected uh, the generalization gap during the training iterations. As you can see, the green curve is uh, the generalization gap of ResNet 47P27. 
It's a little bit lower than the S of ResNet 47P1, which means the generalization ability of ResNet 47P2 Cyber is better than ResNet 47P1. And obviously, the ResNet 47P2O is the best one which have the best generalization ability. In conclusion, we found three interesting things over the project. The first one is that more information given helps ResNet reach a higher performance and get better generalization ability. The second is that the chaining loss of ResNet is mainly impacted with the number of data dimensions. But as the amount of data increase, the chaining loss increase as well. The last thing is that benefiting from more inf image information and the larger data scale, the performance of ResNet can improve the, a lot. Mm. That's all. Thanks for your watching.